We stand on the shoulders of giants. The past creates the opportunities we claim. Anderson, long, long jumper, Anderson, God! Anderson hits it! Anderson hits it! Darren for the tie! He got it! Oh. Illinois going to the final four! We will continue the legacies from the past. What Illinois has been. What it means to represent the fighting Illini. Athletics Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame Gala, presented by Deloitte. Please welcome to the podium your master of ceremonies for this evening, the host of ESPN College Game Day, Reese Davis. Thank you. Thank you for that somewhat tepid round of applause, but I appreciate it anyway. I am delighted to have been asked to be part of this celebration with all of you tonight, and at least for one evening. I'm an honorary Illini, and I'm most glad to be part of it. What a great night we're going to have. We're going to have a, a ton of fun tonight introducing you to the 2018 class for the Illinois Athletic Hall of Fame. But before we get started, they always like for the master of ceremonies to pass along a couple of details. So I'll do that now. The first thing is, some of you are somewhat surprised to see me here, I think, because when I walked in, I had a guy walk up to me and he goes, Wow, has anybody ever told you you look just like Reese Davis? And I, you know, I sort of got a grin on my face and I said, I said, yeah, that happens all the time. And he said, boy, I bet that really pisses you off, doesn't it? But I'm here and I'm proud to be a part of this night because I think it's really important to celebrate the history of the university that has meant so much to so many people in this room. Now, the first thing I want to do is ask you to all please go ahead, start clanging that silverware and enjoying the salads in front of you because we've got an evening full of guests and organizers of events like this get very, very nervous about time. One of the fun games to play when you come to an event like this is everybody, I won't call it wagering because I'm really not sure if wagering's legal in Chicago or not, but everybody puts together a little pool, they make a little investment, and they guess what time will be finished tonight. So before you make your guest, and before you put your money in, all of which should be donated to the University of Illinois for the furtherment of the athletic department, by the way. You're welcome, Josh. I would like to remind you that this year will probably be somewhat shorter than last year, because I don't see Jim Delaney anywhere close by. <laughs> Let me tell you, Jim can eat some clock now. <laughs> Serious clock. We've got some great silent auction items available for you tonight. We hope that you'll get involved in that. Just to list a couple of them. One of a kind trip to the Sunday round at the Masters at Augusta National. What an experience that could be. So you can bid on that. You can take a trip with Fighting Illini to the Maui Invitational in New York City. There's several other unique opportunities and great collectibles that you can bid on right now. And all of the items are listed on your programs at your seat. And you can do it using the World Wide Interwebs. It's really easy. All you have to do, bidding's open until 9.30 p.m. Just go on your mobile device to bidpal.net. If you don't know how to do it, find somebody young at the table. They'll show you how. Wi-Fi login information and the website, all of that, is also listed in your dinner program as well. And it'll be displayed on the video screens throughout the night. 
And if you finish your dinner early, all the auction items are on display near the South Bar at the registration table. I think it's right over there, close to where most of you came in, I'm sure. So let's address the elephants in the room, as it were. Everybody turn and look at the elephants and see the funny joke that the announcer man made. Why are we here? Why is it important to do something like this and to celebrate the history and set a vision for what an athletics department can be? You know, I think one of the, one of the cool things about college sports and the reason that I love covering college sports is because of the connection that people have with the university. Now, I'm not an old man standing up here shaking my fist at the clouds or anything, but I think it's just a fact that there is a generation of sports fans right now, particularly as it pertains to professional sports, their loyalty tends to lie with the player, with the individual star, more so than the team, and that's fine. I mean, they're great stars. That may not be true here in Chicago, where I know so many people are very loyal to their teams. But in many places, it's more about the player. You're a Cavaliers fan until LeBron goes to the Lakers. Maybe Darren Williams will tell us later if that's really going to happen. I don't know. But when you are a fan of a college team, or you went to school there, you had family there, or as part of the formative years, when you saw Lou Henson take the fighting line out of the Final Four, or you saw Darren Williams go to the Final Four, or Jim Grabowski, for some of you, you might have seen him go to the Rose Bowl, right? And it's time to get the Illini back to Pasadena, I think. Or maybe you knew Darren Fletcher hit nearly 500 for a season, right? All of those things become part of you, part of the fabric. They're meaningful to you. You bonded with your family over it. And that's why it's important to have celebrations like tonight, because this university and this athletic department means so much to so many people in this room, across the state, and around the country. You know, I've been very blessed to be able to do what I do and the people that I've worked with. I'm going to help you welcome a Hall of Fame class here at Illinois. And my career has been littered with working with Hall of Famers. I spent 10 years every Saturday working with the Hall of Fame Coach Lou Holtz. Coaches can have a great influence on you. I mean, people ask me now, they'll say, how are you doing? I go, I'm doing terrible. They say, what's wrong? I go, well, don't tell people about your problems. Daddy percent don't care. The other 10% are glad you got them. My wife says I couldn't communicate if I hadn't spent 10 years with Lou Holtz. I worked with Mark May, who's a Hall of Famer. I've worked with Digger Phelps, who's a Hall of Famer, at least in his own mind. I did games. He's not here. I worked with Jim Calhoun, who's a Hall of Famer. I worked with Bob Knight, who's a Hall of Famer. Worked with Dick Vitale, who's a Hall of Famer. But I don't talk to Dick now. I never speak to him because I don't want to interrupt him. But the thing about working with Hall of Famers and all of the guys that I mentioned, I think there are three things. One, it makes me the most overcoached sportscaster in the business. It means I've probably got a really nice place in heaven for putting up with all of those guys. And the most important thing, it gives me a deep appreciation for people who accomplish things at the highest level, like the people that we're going to welcome in to the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame tonight. After dinner, we're going to meet all of these Hall of Famers, all of them that are in attendance. We'll have a series of group discussions. They'll come join us on the comfy chairs up here. But now I want you to continue to enjoy your dinner, and we're going to enjoy some great music as well during the time, provided by the Joan Hickey Jazz Trio, led by Joan Hickey from the University of Illinois School of Music. Enjoy the music, enjoy your dinner, and we'll see you in a little while. I hope everybody enjoyed their dinner. We're still enjoying dessert and coffee now, and great shout out to the staff here who put together a great meal for all of us tonight. I'd like to thank Sid Misick, who now has me properly attired with a little Illinois orange here. Sid, thank you. Sid, is it true that without you, Gail Sayers would have just been another back? Handed, no, he says it's not true. He handed the ball off to Gail Sayers at Kansas. Is that right, Sid? Way to go, Sid. Way to make, 
Way to make Bears legend Gail Sayers everything he became. Nice job. Sid handed the ball at just the right time. I want to thank uh, Joan and Jeremiah Hunt and Joel Spencer, the Joan Hickey Trio. If you haven't done so already, I want you to continue to bid on the auction items as well. Bid information, auction items, they're listed in your program there. Everything gets accepted until 9.30 tonight. You can do it on your phone. All of the details are there. I'm sure you've already seen the Wi-Fi login and everything, so make sure that you get those opportunities to make your bids, maybe take a trip to Maui, see the Maui Invitational, maybe go to New York, some other great experiences as well. Many companies and individuals who have made this event possible tonight Many of the sponsors are listed in the program. Their names and logos have been displayed on the screens throughout dinner. We greatly appreciate all of their support. We'd really like to thank and recognize Deloitte, who is a presenting sponsor this evening, and True Partners Consulting, who sponsored the reception. A round of applause for our sponsors. We're going to meet this 2018 Hall of Fame class very shortly. One member of the 2018 class, tennis standout Kevin Anderson, not able to be with us tonight. He's currently competing in ATP events in Europe. He sends his regrets, and we certainly send our congratulations to Kevin on his inclusion in this 2018 Hall of Fame class. We are pleased that Darren Williams, who was a member of last year's class, couldn't make it because he's playing in the NBA Finals. Darren's with us. I saw him earlier. Where's Darren? There he is. He's behind a big plant there. Darren, congratulations. Welcome. He's going to join us on stage a little bit later on, and I'm going to ask a question of him that everybody in this room has a strong opinion on. Kendall Gill will have a strong opinion on this question as well, a little foreshadowing. So we'll see. We'll see what they have to say. Besides Darren, we have several other members of the 2017 Hall of Fame class who have come back to join us this evening. Would you please give a nice, warm Illini welcome to track standout, Perdita Felicien. Perdita. <laughs> Former National Golfer of the Year and current head coach, Renee Hyken Sloan. Renee, welcome. And a man we will hear from shortly, a giant in the sport of basketball, Jerry Colangelo is with us tonight, Jerry. We also have several family members of Hall of Famers who have passed on and are no longer with us. We will hear more about these legendary Illini later on, but we certainly want to welcome all of the family members of Hall of Famers who are no longer with us, who are joining us in this celebration tonight. Since 2015, the Big Ten Medal of Honor has been awarded annually at each conference school to a male and female senior student athlete who demonstrates proficiency in scholarship and in athletics. The medal has become the top annual award at the University of Illinois Division of Intercollegiate Athletics bestows. Now before we focus and meet the Hall of Famers who've had some exploits in the somewhat distant past, we're going to start tonight by recognizing Illinois' 2018 Big Ten Medal of Honor winners. Senior Isaiah Martinez, you can see on the screen here, wrapped up his Illinois career as the most successful wrestler in program history. He's a two-time NCAA champion, four-time NCAA finalist, four-time Big Ten champion, member of the 2018 USA Freestyle World Cup team, and oh yeah, he'll earn his bachelor's degree in sociology. Isaiah, congratulations. Also in the Big Ten Medal of Honor winner track and cross country standout, Nicole Choquette. She went from hometown walk on to the 2015 indoor 600 meter champion, a two time all Big Ten performer, she also placed in both the 2016 and 18 Big Ten Championships, and she has earned her Bachelor's of Science degree, graduating summa cum laude, and is on track to earn a Master's of Science degree in plant biology. She's very smart, and she runs a lot. 
She earned the University of Illinois Bronze Tablet Award in 2016. Nicole Choquette, congratulations. Now, Isaiah couldn't be with us tonight, but Nicole, if you would please come to the stage now and join Director of Athletics Josh Whitman. Let's have a round of applause for Nicole. Congratulations. You snuck up behind me there. Glad to see you. And also a member of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, Jerry Colangelo, that we will have join us in just a little bit. Josh Whitman is here now. Josh, congratulations. Cole, congratulations. Round of applause. We mentioned Jerry Colangelo's name just a moment ago. He's one of the most influential men in the sport of basketball, always has the good of the sport in mind in both his role in administration, his role in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, a former owner of the Suns, a member of the Hall of Fame, and now chairman of that, director of the U.S. national team, and a member of last year's Illinois Athletics inaugural Hall of Fame class. Please welcome Mr. Jerry Colangelo. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be here. It seems like it was just a week or so ago I was here in the, in the inaugural class, and it's my honor to be here tonight. And so, as I think about the people I want to uh, introduce to you, uh, there are great memories about each and every one of the three uh, in their own individual right. Uh, Dave Downey, one of my teammates at the University of Illinois. <clears throat> One of the great backs in the history of the University of Illinois and Jim Grabowski. And then the incomparable coach Lou Henson. And so it's my honor to present the three of them this evening. Let's take a look at the screen. Lou Henson, basketball. Lou Henson's legendary coaching career spanned 41 years at three programs, and he remains as the winningest coach in Fighting Illini history with 423 victories during his 21 years in charge of the orange and blue. Henson led Illinois to 12 NCAA tournament appearances, two trips to the Elite Eight, and one trip to the Final Four in 1989. He still ranks fifth all-time among Big Ten coaches in both total wins and conference wins at 214. Henson was inducted into the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame in 2015, the same year the playing floor at State Farm Center was officially dedicated as Lou Henson Court. Dave Downey, Basketball. Dave Downey showed incredible leadership on the basketball floor, in the classroom, and later in his professional career. A member of the Illinois All-Century basketball team, he set the Illini single-game scoring record of 53 points, which still stands, and finished his career as the school's career leader in scoring and rebounds. Downey earned all Big Ten honors all three years and was named first team All-American as a senior in 1963 when he helped lead the Illini to a Big Ten championship. Jim Grabowski, football. Jim Grabowski finished his Illinois career as the all-time Big Ten rushing leader with 2,878 yards. A punishing runner, Grabo was consensus first-team All-America and was third in the Heisman Trophy voting in 1965. He was a two-time academic All-American, the 1965 Big Ten Silver Football Award winner, and the 1966 Big Ten Medal of Honor recipient. Grabowski helped Illinois to the 1963 Big Ten Football Championship and Rose Bowl victory over Washington with a 125 rushing yard effort to earn MVP honors in Pasadena. He was a two-time Super Bowl champion with the Green Bay Packers and was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1995. Everybody's got their microphones here. What an illustrious group I have here. We're going to talk to all of these guys first, but I want to start. I want to tell you how much good it does my heart, Coach, to see that orange blazer. Man, how about that? Looking good. 
What, what was the story? Tell me about the first time you wore that. Tell me about the first time you wore the orange blazer. In 1975 when I came to Illinois, and I haven't had it all fifth since. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, led you, what led you to Illinois? What made you decide to make that move? Well, first of all, uh, when I came to Illinois, the first ball game we had a sprinkling of orange. Didn't see the orange any place. So our goal was, and the football coaches wanted blue. So we started working on the orange. And we did a great job for the past several years. You walk into the assembly hall, State Farm Center, it's a sea of orange. So many great teams in Illinois. Coach Henson, of course, took one of the final four, but I'll tell you what, when Dave Downey was there, he would put up some serious numbers for the Illini, too. It sort of broke a dry spell for Illinois by winning a Big Ten championship. What do you remember about that season? Well, I remember that we had a real good balanced team. We had everybody scored at one time on that five-man team more than 25 points in a game. So I'm just here kind of representing a real team, not just one individual. That's a, that is a classy Hall of Fame answer. But you put 53 up in a night, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that still stands as a single game scoring record for an individual. Am I correct there? Well, I am correct. Well, it was nice to be able to do that. <laughs> and particularly against Indiana. <laughs> At Indiana. How many would you have had if there had been a three point line? That was bef before the three point yeah, line. Yeah, if you'd had one. Well, as a matter of fact, there have been five people score 50 in a Big Ten game, all before the three-point line. And it probably was a good thing Lou wasn't the coach. I wouldn't have got that many shots, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, you two guys, Jim, you overlapped a little bit on campus, right? You guys were there partially a part of the time at the same time? But you, you, tell me about it. You, you saw him score the 53 points? You know, I kept thinking, boy, I, I, I kept thinking that, you know, I, I could play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he was such a star. I mean, he was, he was the man on campus. 53 points, and even with, if you had a three-point line, that's, that's unbelievable. What about, what about your time there, too? You were in contention for the Heisman Trophy, finished in the top three, took a team to a championship, to the Rose Bowl. What's your most lasting memory when you think back on those days, those days that for many in this room, so important to you? Very honestly, the most lasting memories I have of those days are these guys right out here that I played with. They are, I, I can't tell you how thankful I, I, am, I am for the amount of guys that showed up for this. And I really mean that. That is the most lasting thing I have about playing on the University of Illinois football team. Great bunch of guys, really tough guys that, you know, Ron Gunther is a guard on that team, all Big Ten, and most people won't believe that. Uh, Greg Schumacher, who I played with in high school, and we've known each other almost 60 years. I mean, those are memories. Now, you didn't win the Heisman, and nowadays, when we do the Heisman Trophy ceremony, it's a, big, it's a big weekend. We televise the thing, bring the families in, everybody finds out there's a big buildup. How'd you find out that Mike Garrett from USC had edged you out? <laughs> it's, it's a little different uh, back then. Um, I, I, I heard the announcement that Garrett won it, that's all. I mean, we, I think where I, were you? I think, you I, was, where you I think I was out in New York. There, you know, there was an All-American thing out in New York, and, and uh, we were out there at the time and say, hey, someone came up and said, you didn't win it. I said, oh, OK. <laughs> you, know? So, uh, you know, what are you going to do? It, you know, now you know you have the top five guys come for the Iceman show, and, and you know, just things are so different now, and, and, and for the better, I think. Now. Dave, Jim said that he saw you play. Do you remember watching him play football? Oh, yes. He was a real player. Yeah. He had another real player on that team, too, named Butkus. And Did he uh, tackle anybody? <laughs> well, he knocked people around pretty good, but Jim was, he had good hands. He could catch passes. He could run. He was reasonably fast, even. <laughs> you know, at that time, if we take a three-year period, we really had terrific players. 
if my count is right, I think we had 11 members of that team from my sophomore year to my senior year that played at least some time in the NFL. And that was pretty good with the fact that there were, how many teams were there? <laughs> there was only 16 and 14 in the NFL. And so anyway, we had a good, a really damn good football team. Dave, you, you actually used your education, your experience there to, to make some change in the city of Champaign. What, how did your experience at Illinois shape your awareness in terms of fighting for equality and standing up to, to make the society, make the atmosphere in the neighborhood better and, and as best as it could be? Well, when I went over there, you have to understand, my father couldn't read or write. I, no one in the family had ever thought about going to college. And so the fact I'm sitting here tonight is a tribute to my mom and dad who taught me how to behave first. And then when I went over there, I, I fell in love with the community. I never left. I've been there ever since. But it was a great atmosphere for learning. And the faculty was uh, very amenable to having some tall kid from the country come talk to them. It was a really good experience for me, so much so that I stayed and I stay as long as I can. Champagne's been better for it, for sure. Coach, I understand that you had a visitor, that Kendall Gill came to see you recently. Tell me what you guys did when he came to visit. Talk basketball. <laughs> and, what, and what did you watch? Yeah, well, Kendall and I, we're, we're trying to raise money for the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, we talked about it and did some work on that. Did, did you watch the Syracuse game? No, we didn't want to do that. <laughs> even, though, even though we won it, we were afraid we might lose it that time. <laughs> I like when, when individuals have an honor like this, I like to know what it was like the moment you found out. Coach, when they called you, and said they were going to put you into the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. What were, you, what were you doing and what was your reaction? I don't know what I was doing, but I was really honored at the time and I'm honored today. It's, uh, it's something very special to me to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's special to all of us for you. Yeah. When, when you got the word, how did you find out? You, Dave, yeah. Well, Josh called me and said we had a close vote, but he won by one. <laughs> but, he, no, it was a, this is what I look like when I'm excited, so. <laughs> but it was an exciting thing, and it's, it's nice to be here with these people, and I'm with an awfully good group, and that makes me feel very good. So how did you find out? Well, again, Josh called us, uh, called me, and you know, uh, let me know that I've been going to be inducted in this Hall of Fame. Of course, I was thrilled. You know, it's it's uh, it's such an honor, and you know, especially to be up here with with the round ball players. You know, I played with an oblong ball, and it didn't bounce back to me. But to be up here with you guys is is real pleasure. What do you think? with the history that you guys have with this university, what's the significance of celebrating past accomplishments and maintaining those types of ties with the school, between the school and the alums and, and people, even students who are there now? Well, when, when I was a kid and I would read about great athletes, it was what pulled me over the hump to be able to say, if I could be like that someday, not all athletes are great human beings, but I believed at the time they were. And I think for us to be able to tell the young people that if you work hard, do the right thing, even if you don't become an all-star, you may learn something from the process, and I have learned a hell of a lot from it. You know, being on a team is so important for the rest of your life. I mean, just teamwork. And, and, and I was lucky enough, and I, you know, they'll argue with me, but, you know, I played the ultimate team game. I mean, there's 11 guys out there, and if one guy messes up, that play won't work. 
you know, whereas if you had Downey on your basketball team, you know, maybe you didn't need the other four guys that often. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it taught you that. It taught you friendship. You know, like I said earlier, I mean, these guys have been so close to me for 50 plus years. And, you know, you, don't, you just don't get that in the business world like you do, do on a team. You know, I mean, these, you know, these are the guys you bled with. These are guys that straighten out your nose a few times. I mean, this is, it, it really is special to play on a, on a team. What is it? Coach, what is it that gives you the greatest satisfaction about what Jim was talking about, about being a part of a team, or in your case, being a leader of a team? Well, I, I think a coach is the main leader, but you've got to have leadership on the team. Through the years, we always had tremendous leadership, and without that, you're not going to win. Well, you won a lot. Coach, I want you to keep your seat there for a second. Let's have a nice round of applause for Jim and Dave. Yeah. Couple of Illini legends, now Hall of Famers. Jim, congratulations. Coach, you stay seated there for a second, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Reese. Thank Coach, you. Coach, Great if, you'll job. if you'll stay right here just a second. Okay. Coach, we've got a little something else for you. Just okay, a second. okay, thank you'll you. Stay Dave, congratulations. Thank you. thank you very much. Great Illini legends. I'd like now to welcome to the stage another member of the Fighting Illini basketball family, a former team manager and a 1991 graduate at Illinois, and the current lead sports anchor for CBS2 here in Chicago, Ryan Baker. Ryan? Thank you so much, Reese. And I see Coach Henson, you tried to get up. But hey, he's coachable. He's coachable. We can coach him up. Hey, we're all here tonight to celebrate greatness, greatness that we watched or witnessed at some point and be able to touch that and see that tonight. And I have to thank this man for allowing me to be a part of some greatness. Uh, I met Coach Henson in person 31 years ago. I'll never forget it. It was at the City Suburban All-Star Game up at Loyola, and I walked up to Coach Hinton and said, Coach, my name is Ryan Baker. I'm at Thorn Ridge High School. You know, Quinn Buckner. He said, oh, hey, I know, I know, I know. And uh, I said, I wrote a letter, and I want to be one of your managers. Okay. Go to the office when you get on campus, and we'll work it out. Well, as soon as I dropped my bags off at the six-pack at Hopkins Hall, who remembers the six-pack? Any six-pack in the house? I I'm sorry. Eikenberry Commons. It always be the six-pack to the old heads, right? And I ran, I made a beeline to Assembly Hall, I think the very next day after I got on campus, and Dorothy Damewood, where's Dorothy? See, Dorothy, a lot of people don't know, she ran the program, am I right? Coach would say that and Coach Coombs and Coach Collins and Coach Nagy was in there and Coach is a man of his word and that was in the fall of 1987. Little did I know how much that would change my life forever. Being affiliated with the University of Illinois, with fighting Illini basketball, um, I got a chance to have a front row seat to watch one of the greatest coaches in college basketball history and one of the greatest teams in college basketball history, the Flying Illini. And uh, as I tell people all the time, and Coach, you will know this, the games were great, and not even the practices, the preseason workouts at Huff. I know we're trying to raise some money for Ubbin, but back in the day, it was like watching a Rocky movie when the rust was falling down and the sweat. And it, but these guys, I tell you what, no excuses. I think we won a whole lot more games back when we were at Huff, didn't we, Kendall? Got to give a shout out to my brother from another mother, Kendall Gill, one of the Hall of Famers. Uh, we go way back. Uh, one of the godfather to my children. Uh, I always remember that time in the game, Coach Hinton said, hey, Kendall, going for Gill, because he had a lot going on. Do you remember that? And all of a sudden, he said, no, I'm Bardo. That's a whole other thing. But I, I do want to say this. 
Coach Henson is all about toughness. That's the main thing he preached as a coach. And the fact that he's here tonight is a testament to the toughness that he talked about as a coach. So can we stand on our feet and give him a round of applause for just being here tonight? Because that was not a guarantee. So give it up for Coach Lou Henson. 423 wins in 21 seasons. That's what toughness is all about. And Coach, I hear you're swimming. You're back at Bromley in the morning swimming? Oh, yeah, yeah. The Olympics are coming up, you know. The, never count Coach Hitson out. Coach, we've, we've, uh, I went from your manager to your chauffeur. I used to drive him around the state on recruiting trips. Remember that? He diagrammed plays. I picked all the wrong ones. But Coach was, has been a tremendous role model, a mentor, a friend. And it's only fitting that on Father's Day weekend, we celebrate the patriarch of the modern era of Illinois basketball. And I know, Coach, you've got a street named after you. You've got a basketball. Matter of fact, you have two courts. Well, when the history books are written, and one of the legacies of Lou and Mary Henson, I have to pause right there. Mary, can you stand up? We have to acknowledge you. Because that's the real head coach. OK? Anybody affiliated with Illinois basketball calls her mom. Thank you, Mary. Embrace me from day one, everybody who's come through that program. So thank you. And uh, I tell you what, that, that's your number one coach, isn't it? But let's see this new technology. Here we go. One of the legacies of Lou and Mary Henson will be their passion for supporting the academic success of their student athletes. They understood the power of the University of Illinois degree and the impact it would have on players' lives once their athletic careers were finished. In order to help cement that legacy and to honor their coach, a group led by Steve Lanter and Larry Lubin, my other brothers from other mothers, They've worked to establish the Lou and Mary Henson Academic Assistance Fund. As of date, over $500,000 in commitments have been raised to support this initiative. The endowed fund will ensure that Illinois men's basketball players will always have the financial assistance available to them to return to campus and finish their degrees. That deserves a round of applause. Thank you, Thank you Larry. Thank you, Steve. And Coach's legacy will live on forever. Coach, congratulations. We thank you, and we love you. Yeah, thank congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. The Lou can do. At this time, we're going to keep it moving and honor our next group of Hall of Famers, three Illini that have earned multiple All-American honors and led their respective teams yeah. to postseason success. Let's take a look at the tape. Yeah. Justin Spring, gymnastics. Justin Spring was a four-time NCAA individual champion and 13-time All-American during his Sterling Illini gymnastics career. The 2006 Nissan Emory Award winner as the nation's outstanding senior gymnast, Spring was also named the Big Ten Gymnast of the Year that season. In 2005, he became the first Illini gymnast to win a national title at the Visa Championships, winning the gold on high bar which he repeated in 2007 while adding a national title on parallel bars in 2008. Spring was a five-time U.S. senior national team member and in 2008 helped the U.S. Olympic team to a bronze medal at the Beijing Games. Tara Hurlis, soccer. A two-time second team All-American for the Fighting Illini soccer team, Tara Hurlis finished her career as the program's all-time leading scorer with 47 goals, a mark that lasted 11 years. She was named first team all region and first team all Big Ten in 2003 and 04, and helped lead the 2003 squad to the Big Ten tournament title and the 2004 Illini team to the NCAA Elite Eight. Scott Langley, golf. Golfer Scott Langley was a three-time All-American for Illinois and put together an incredible season in 2010 that saw him become the first Illini to win medalist honors at the NCAA championships. 
He was also named Big Ten Golfer of the Year in 2010 and was a three-time All-Big Ten selection. Langley was a three-time academic All-Big Ten honoree, a three-time All-Midwest Region selection, and an Arnold Palmer Cup participant in 2010. He has been on the PGA Tour since 2013. Three more Hall of Famers. Tara, I'm correct in saying that you're now a police officer on campus, right? Yes, that's correct. I, I am not a security guard where yet because, could you stand up? What, what's your baseball guy? Right, yep. Who, Darren Fletcher? Is that yeah, for? yeah. So, quick story, sidebar, hope this doesn't take too much time, but we were honored at the basketball game because we were all in town. He's like, hey, that's great. I'm so glad that you're, are you my private security guard? <laughs> and I said, no, actually, security guards don't carry guns, and I, actually, I am. And I'm actually in your Hall of Fame class. And he said, so you're not my security guard? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Hey, hey, Fletch, you're lucky you didn't get tased, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Okay, I understand you're not a security guard. Does that mean next time I come to Champaign, I can park anywhere I want? Hey, that's not, that's not my uh, specialty. But, you, you, you park wherever you want, you're probably going to get a $60 ticket because oh, I get tickets. Don't risk it. <laughs> <laughs> On campus, for sure. Yeah. Tara, you, you came to Illinois and helped elevate the program. What was that time like for you in your life? Um, the program had just started out. It's kind of new. started in 97, 98. Um, so when I was being recruited and going through the whole process, to me, would I go to a program where it's already established or could I go to a program that was kind of new and help establish one and, and, and leave the program better than when I, when I started? So I, was, I fell in love with the campus. I'm still there. And I'm dealing with some of these coaches' athletes. Um, I will say that I am <laughs> seven for seven on foot pursuits, so if your student athletes run for me, they're not gonna win. <laughs> but I mean, just the, the, the sport alone has grown so much. It, you know, Janet Rayfield came in my uh, sophomore year and the program wouldn't be where it is today without the leadership from her and what she's established as the coach of U of I soccer. So I don't know if everybody heard, but you said that none of your guys have any run-ins with Officer that, Hurlis here. That is she would true. have told me, not that I, I know of. I would have called them. No, I, I've actually right? shared with some of the coaches the stories of where I've dealt with some of, the, some of their players. So. Now, you two, you also have chosen to stay at Illinois. And when you were a recruit, you could have gone anywhere you wanted to go. Why, why did you decide to go to Illinois? Um... So I, I say this all the time, people ask me that question. I, I, I took trips all over the place. Um, I felt like my, my recruiting trip, has anyone ever seen the movie with Jim Carrey, The Truman Show? Yeah. Where he lives in like a, a fabricated world where everyone's just super nice and it all revolves around him. That's what my recruiting trip felt like. And I, and I went through and I was like, I came from DC, uh, Northern Virginia, everything's fast paced, people are, I don't have that Midwest courtesy and, and politeness, so to speak. And I came to Illinois, and I, I, I could not believe people would just welcome to Illinois. You know, I just everywhere I turned, I was like, this is ridiculous. I've never been to a place where people were so accommodating, so nice, so proud and excited that I was a recruit here, and they'd want to make my experience amazing. And I just, anywhere I went, Ohio State, Oklahoma, uh, Berkeley, Michigan, I, I just. <laughs> oh, I, somebody uh, knows how to play the crowd, don't they? I couldn't. <laughs> I, it was genuine and real, and I left Illinois as my first trip, and I, I took all my five trips with what ended up later being my best man and teammate for four years here, Adam Palmer. I think he'll be up here down the road, but we just couldn't get Illinois out of our heads. It just struck us hard right here, and we never, and, and I've never left. <laughs> I, I noticed a picture. On, on your Twitter feed, and I, correct me if I don't have it exactly right, but I think I do, the big block I, I fight for the team and we fight for the I. Sort of a mantra, right? Yeah, actually, I, um, 
and that's not an Illinois branded thing. That's just one of my athletes from he, my. He just he just trademarked it himself. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> I, I did, uh, Andrew Margolis, who graduated, he was on my 2012 national championship winning team, and he was just playing with the slogans, and he came up with it, and I was like, I, I love that. Because um, that's, that's what it was about for me. I, you know, I had lots of individual accolades, but honestly, I, I came to a team that felt like home immediately for me. I, um, Illinois was, was not at the top of its program history at that point in, in 2002 or one when I was being recruited, and it didn't matter to me. It was the group of people, it was the coaches, it was the community that I wanted to do great things for because um, I immediately felt a sense of connection. Yours is an individual sport. Scott, yours is an individual sport, yet there's this feeling and this sense of the importance of team and connection to Illinois. How did that manifest itself in your career in college? Well, I, you know, when I think back to my time in Illinois, I, uh, as a golfer, it's very much an independent sport like we talked about but uh, when I got to Illinois you know I'm, I made such close friendships with my teammates and uh, to this day you know my roommate in my class coming in for golf was uh, the best man at my wedding and uh, you know two of my other teammates were in my wedding party and uh, it just it, it's amazing like the, the camaraderie you experience and um, you know we we uh, ranking wise weren't great when I got to school and uh, I, re I just remembered being very green and very, uh, you know, eyes wide open sort of uh, experience. But our seniors, uh, I'll never forget just all the, all the things they helped me with and showed me the ropes and, and really helped me feel kind of comfortable in college and um, this whole new this whole new world that I was a part of. And um, to this day, you know, some of my closest friends are, are guys that I played with in, in college. Obviously, you had great success. Your team's had success. But it's not exactly year-round golfing weather in Champaign, right? Is that fair to say? I'm trying to be diplomatic here. So why was that? Why were you okay with that? What was it that made you realize it was the right place for you? So I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, which is also not year-round golfing weather, uh, unless you really, really want it. Um, so you can, you know. But um, you know, I took some visits like Justin to some different schools and. Um, Went to Illinois, and I'll never forget just the feeling I experienced when I, uh, I left my visit there. Um, I pretty much made up my mind on the car ride home that that's where I was gonna that's where I was gonna go. And uh, you know, the coaching staff uh, on the golf side of things is is in, in my belief the best in the best in the country. Um, Coach Small, and uh, yeah. You know, here's a guy that that has played professionally and excelled in school. Um, he played at Illinois, and, um, but really went on to do exactly what I knew I wanted to do eventually. Um, but also a guy that I really looked up to as a role model and just the way that he conducted himself and um, somebody I really wanted to kind of follow after. And, and uh, Coach Small checked all those boxes for me. And uh, to this day, I mean, he's, he's been one of my, my biggest role models. and. Um, one of the biggest influences on my on my life for sure um you know and to get that from a college coach is was something that was really special and something that i just felt from the beginning that would happen um and, and it, it totally held to be true tara how would you describe the influence that the coaching staff had on you particularly as you guys started to have success and ultimately won a championship Actually, we were just talking about this tonight. I came in with a different coach, so Janet did not recruit me. And I was working soccer camp in the summer of, uh, I think it would be 02. And I got a call from someone within the university saying, hey, Trisha left, we have this new coach. And then I got another call saying, hey, do you wanna come to the University of Miami? Which is where she went. Um, but just seeing how it evolved and what Janet put into us. I mean, it is a team sport. Um, and I sure as hell wouldn't be here without all my teammates and with her um, challenging me and pushing me to be not only a better athlete, but a better person. And I think that that's what I can sort of give back to the university and to the student athletes and non-athletes at the university is what she taught me. How about the transition, Justin, for you? Olympic experience, 
bronze medal, and now making the transition from being an athlete to having the type of influence on your athletes that you just heard Scott and Tara talk about. What has that been like for you? Uh, that might have been, you know, so I just tapped uh, Mr. Ron Gunther on the shoulder over there, and I, I, I think I opened with, what were you thinking hiring me? I was 25 years old, <laughs> you know, and I, I walked up to thank him, and I, he kind of blew me away. He's like, he, I think he saw something in myself as a coach before I, before I did. Um, I came off the Olympics. I had three years of coaching experience as an assistant, and someone spoke to us today, and our head coach, you know, there's, there's a huge difference between the number one and number two guy uh, as far as leadership is concerned. So I, I had the audacity to walk into his office and say, I don't know if you're considering me, but I, I think I could do the job. I don't have that much experience. And he took my <laughs> jaw dropped me and said, oh, we were hoping you'd say something like that. And 26-year-old me was like, <laughs> well, well, good. Oh, my God. I'm going to take over a program at 26. And I called my dad, uh, who's an astronaut, and um, 32, yeah, yeah, big shoes to fill. 32 years in the Army, two tours in Vietnam, Desert Storm. And uh, he put it into perspective real quickly and was like, well, at your age, 26, I literally was in charge of 26 athlete, people's lives in Vietnam. And I was like, well, shit, Dad, that really puts it into perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> what, what I have to do is easy, isn't it, right? Like, and maybe those bars aren't so yeah, tough after all, right? <laughs> literally in charge of their lives. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just give this thing my best shot, you know? And it, I, the same approach I took as being an athlete, you know? I, um, setting high expectations, nothing's ever good enough, and this constant belief that we can always be better. And um, I, I, I challenge my athletes to do that every day. Um, we won a championship in 12. Um, when we came back in 13, I said, we got to be better than last year, you know? And we've had some ups and downs, but um, I don't know. I, I, I truly thank Ron for giving me an opportunity. I, coaching was never, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot a little bit, and, I, and I'm also, and I apologize in advance, I'm going to name drop for a second. We have these things at ESPN called the upfronts where we roll out everything we're going to do for the year, and we have a lot of people come and join us. And... Have, have any of you guys, I'm sure Kendall, Darren, maybe Dion have seen, have you seen Kobe Bryant's details uh, on there? I somehow just through serendipity wound up just sitting with Kobe for about 20 minutes. We we're just talking about philosophy. And he said something about coaching that he said he asked every coach and then measured their answer. What do you do specifically to make yourself a better coach? Uh, put me on the spot, right? I, I know I said, and I apologize. The key to all of guys. your success, right, with the amazing people in the room. I, I mean, honestly, for me, I think it's, uh, it's never settling, always maintaining a growth mindset, a belief that you can always be better, but also surrounding yourself with people that will tell you very bluntly sometimes they disagree. Uh, if you've ever walked by the men's gymnastics offices, and Josh has maybe on a few times where had to have been like, uh, you know, we get heated, and, uh, and it's intense because my assistant coaches feel very comfortable telling me they don't agree with me, and I think that's the key to success is I'm constantly being challenged, so when we make a decision, I feel really, I feel really comfortable it's the right decision. How does, how, does that mindset, how does that mindset still apply to what you're pursuing right now, Scott? And you had great success, and you're continuing to, to make your way in professional golf. How does that mindset impact you? Well, golf is just so, um, it's, it's such a journey, right? It's, you play, you know, if, if I stay healthy, I can play for 30 years, you know? So it's this constant, like, ebb and flow, right? Of success, failure, um, on a large scale, and, and at times on a by-minute scale. You know, you watch the U.S. Open, and you see guys, you know, birdie the first hole, and then make a triple on the second hole, you know, it's, that's the way the game is. You're constantly evolving. Um, but um, to Justin's point, you know, it's an individual game, but my goal has always been to surround myself with great people. And that began with me at Illinois with Coach Small. And it's, it's kind of continued um, in my, you know, current situation with, you know, coaches that I work with and, and just kind of 
people I surround myself with, but um, yeah, it's just, it's, you're kind of constantly evolving, changing, um, and trying to improve. And, uh, you know, thankfully, um, my Illinois family has always been a constant, you know, being able to reach out to uh, Coach Small, and, and one of my teammates is now the assistant, Zach Barlow. And, uh, you know, always kind of relying on those guys if um, I find myself, you know, needing anything. And, and uh, you know, that, that's something that truly means everything to me is my Illinois family. And, uh, you know, I know that that will never change. Tara, when we leave here tonight and you're officially a Hall of Famer, what will be the most meaningful thing to you about that? Just being able to spend it with the guys up here and the, the room full of other athletes. When I started playing soccer at five, I never thought that this is what was going to come of it. And I think that um, putting myself in situations and, and competing at the highest level at U of I and then uh, when I went ahead and played in Sweden, it helped me to realize that it, it made me who I am today. Um, it helps me communicate. It, it challenges me to be a better person. And I just, when I received the call from Josh, I had just woken up because I worked night shift. So I didn't know if I was dreaming. I was still asleep. Is this a joke? Uh, what's going on? Um, I'm just happy to spend it here with everyone in the room and the past inductees and the current ones. It was no joke. It was no dream. Very well deserved for all three of you. Congratulations to all of you, members of this Hall of Fame class. Justin Spring, Tara Hurlis, and Scott Langley. Nice round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. It was great. Very well done. That was awesome. That was awesome. Scott, congratulations. Great job. You guys have so much to be proud of. My goodness, we've only been through a couple of these and uh, certainly remarkable, remarkable representatives of this university. Now let's welcome to the stage the 14th Director of Athletics at the University of Illinois and a former Academic All-America at Illinois, Josh Whitman. Josh. I could see. Wow, it's great to see everybody here again this evening. I hope many of you are returners. For those of you here for the first time, I hope you now understand what all the fuss is about. This is an unbelievable evening. I can't thank everybody enough for, for carving out some time on a June Friday to be a part of this, uh, this special night. It's, it's been my pleasure over the last couple years to travel and, and have the opportunity to, to attend a sev several different Hall of Fame events. I've been to the Professional Football Hall of Fame induction. I've been to the College Football Hall of Fame induction. I had the good fortune of joining Manny Jackson last fall at the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame induction. And one of my favorite things about these Hall of Fame events is the fact that all of these past inductees continue to prioritize that celebration and to attend and to make a priority of welcoming in their new brethren, people who are now joining them in that Hall of Fame. And uh, I want to thank our returning Hall of Famers this evening. We had six uh, with us, including Darren Williams, who's with us after not being able to join us a year ago. And it means a great deal that they're here. I hope that's a tradition that continues to grow. I hope as we have this event year after year, that group of former inductees uh, continues to grow and becomes a, a, an important piece of their calendar, the same as it is for us. As you would imagine, a lot of people to, to recognize and thank on this very special evening. We certainly couldn't be standing here without the assistance and support of, of so many. I want to start with recognizing our university's chancellor, Dr. Robert Jones, who's joined this evening by his wife, Dr. Lynn Hassan Jones. Also tonight, very fortunate to have with us the president of the University of Illinois System, Dr. Tim Colleen and his wife, Dr. Roberta Johnson Colleen. We also have with us a member of our Board of Trustees, Jill Smart and her husband, Steve. Yeah. 
Jim Moore, the president of the University of Illinois Foundation, is here with his wife, Shelly. And Jennifer Neubauer, president of the University of Illinois Alumni Association, is here as well. I'm often asked about the university's support for our athletic program, and I will tell you that I think actions often speak louder than words, and the fact that so many of our upper administration has joined us here this evening, I think, speaks volumes about where they prioritize our athletic program and about the support that I've experienced, that our coaches have experienced, that our student athletes continue to experience from them every single day that we go out and try and represent this institution in each and every one of you. And so I want to extend my thanks and grateful to all of them for their support. Uh, it really does make an incredible difference to have that kind of alignment, that kind of backing from the highest reaches of our university. So thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you very much. As you would imagine, an event like this one doesn't happen overnight. We've had many, many of our staff members working tirelessly to bring this event together now for weeks and, and really in many cases months. And as you would imagine, that, that list is fairly lengthy. There are a few people I'd like to single out this evening. Marty Kaufman, Kent Brown, who actually is not with us tonight because his daughter is getting married this weekend. Maria McDevitt, Bobby Busboom, and Daryl Miles, who's responsible for all of our great video. A big round of applause for them. In reality, though, they've been joined by, by truly dozens of other members of our staff, all of whom have lent their expertise, many of whom are here with us this evening, as well as many of our coaches, many of our head coaches and assistant coaches are here. I'd like to ask everybody who's on the DIA staff if they could please stand and be recognized. A night like this evening isn't, isn't possible without the support of many really critical sponsors. We want to thank each and every one of them. Again, their names have been displayed on the screen over the course of the evening. You can read about them in your programs. There are two sponsors in particular who we'd like to single out. You've already heard their names once this evening, but we want to bring some representatives up here to the stage to be recognized. The first is Deloitte. Deloitte is returning for their second year as our presenting sponsor. Uh, Deloitte has been an unbelievable partner of ours. I'd like to invite Carl Allegretti to come up here to the stage. Carl is the managing partner here in the Deloitte Chicago office, and uh, I don't know anybody who is as strong in the line eye as, as Carl. Uh, many of you know his son Nick is a returning senior offensive lineman on our football team. What you might not know is that his other son, on this very evening a year ago, proposed to his fiance, and they're getting married two weeks from today, so, or two weeks from tomorrow. So we're, we're thrilled to have Carl join us, and we're very grateful for Deloitte's support. Another wonderful sponsor this evening, uh, a returning sponsor, True Partners Consulting, as you heard, was a very festive table. For those of you who know Carrie, not surprised at all. Uh, True Partners was uh, the, the sponsor of our reception tonight, and Carrie McMillan has gotten to be a tremendous friend. Again, another wonderful, passionate Illini, and so please join me in thanks for Carrie McMillan, the CEO of True Partners Consulting. Last, in terms of the thank yous, I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, as you can imagine, this is, a, this is a, an incredibly important event on our calendar. It's very meaningful for our honorees and for them to be able to come to a place like this, the Field Museum in Chicago, and to see so many proud Illini faces sitting in the audience here to celebrate their legacy. Uh, it, it has to be an unbelievable experience for each and every one of them, and obviously, that's one of the, the major goals for this evening. So give yourselves a round of applause for being here, please. I would make one final plug for the auction. The reason I will do it, and by the way, we've extended the auction to 9.50. I look at my watch, it's now about 9.45. So you've got five minutes. 
The one, the one item I want to draw your attention to is the trip to the Masters. Now, I go on that trip with the winners. I don't know if that makes it more valuable or less, but we went for the first time this past year. It's, it's a private plane to Augusta. It's a day on Sunday, Championship Sunday, at the Masters with Berkman's Place tickets, which is this unbelievable hospitality experience. It's dinner in Augusta, and then it's a flight home. Uh, truly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so I would encourage you to, to take a hard look at that. Now, I, I was asked recently by someone to describe in one word what it means to be a fighting Illini. And I, I thought about that for some time, and, and she answered the question far better than I ever could. She said, I think it means family. And as I've thought about that, it really is the perfect summary of what this room, this event, this Hall of Fame, Fighting Illini tradition is all about. And think about the parallels between your actual family and your Fighting Illini family. It spans over multiple generations, each of which is impacted and influenced by the generations that came before it. Most of those generations, by the way, have been interviewed by Lauren Tate, uh, who's sitting here somewhere this evening. In a family, you form these unbelievable bonds, and you've heard from some of our honorees already this evening what that teammate connection looks and feels like, what that means. These are relationships that endure, and we tell our student athletes this as they come onto our campus, they endure not for two years, not for three years or four years, but for 40 years and 50 years and 60 years. These bonds mean the world to our student athletes, they mean the world to our fans, people who have been attending our events for decades with their parents, later with their own children. They've marked big moments in their lives according to coming and sitting in the stands at Memorial Stadium or being in the old Assembly Hall, now the State Farm Center. I think a great example, if you see Jim Grabowski and his 17 tables of friends sitting over there today, we're all very lucky that they chose to join us. Family is really about unconditional love, and it's about recognizing that you're going to stand with people through thick and thin, and you may not always like the other people that much, but you're always going to love them. And we certainly have had those moments we all recognize that over the last 10 years or so, we've had some, some thick moments, we've had some not so thin ones. And to have you all stand with us the way that you have, and to know that you continue to stand with us as we build this program into one that can, you can continue to be proud of, means the world to me, it means the world to our staff, and I can assure you it means the world to our student athletes. And so we can't thank each and every one of you enough for your love, for your support, and for continuing to be such proud and passionate fighting Illini. It truly, truly makes an unbelievable difference. The last thing the family has is the family has legends. And when we recruit student athletes to our campus, we talk to them about the opportunity they have to leave a legacy. We tell them if you come to Champaign and you do something truly special, this place will never, ever forget you. And that's really what tonight is all about. The people who have the chance to walk across this stage and sit in these chairs, they did something truly special. And this institution and this athletic program owe them a debt of gratitude and we will never, ever forget them. And so I want to extend my, my most heartfelt congratulations and thanks to our honorees this evening for being a part of this special event and for all that they have done, not just today, but in the years and years before tonight to make this program so, so special. Now it's time to move along with our celebration, continuing now to, to focus on our, our storied and incredibly successful track and field programs. And I mentioned how meaningful it is to me to have our past honorees join us this evening. And uh, it's a real privilege for me to introduce to you our next presenter, one of last year's inductees, a three-time NCAA champion, a two-time world champion, Hurdler Perdita Felician.
everybody. Is anyone that was here last year thinking how, yeah. Raise your hands if you're here. I'm like, where's the year gone? Anybody else? It's, it's gone pretty quickly. It's no exaggeration when I say it's a treat for me and an honor to be able to introduce three giants of the University of Illinois track and field program. In 1999, Gary Winkler recruited me from Pickering, Ontario, Canada. And as you know, part of the recruitment process is a coach will send you a media guide. And so he sent me that media guide probably sometime in the spring. And by August of that year, I'm like, okay, you seem legitimate. You can come to my house and visit me. So he came to my house and I was there with my parents and on my table, the dining room table was this media guide. The rest is history. We all know I came to the University of Illinois. But about 10 years later, so around 2009, Gary and I were somewhere. The details of where we were is really foggy to me. But what I do remember about this one encounter, he was talking to another person. And he said to them, the one thing I remember about visiting Purdy's home when I was recruiting her was the state of that 1998 media guide. It was tore up. And I remember looking at Gary like, why would you tell that story, guy? Why would you tell that story? The reason that media guide was tattered and in shambles in those three months that I had them was because it was an encyclopedia to me. It was a library. I was creating a profile of what it was to be a student athlete at the University of Illinois. And so those pages were curled up, they were torn, the ink was fading in parts where I was circling. I got to know the names, the hometowns, the personal best, the cumulative GPA of this program. You ask me, I knew it. Selena and Tanya were heroes to me and figures that I was able to fashion what I wanted my collegiate career to look like. And I could only hope that I would live up to that. And so my freshman year was 2000 and Coach Williams was there. I believe that was his last year. But I got to learn the world-class accomplishments that he had achieved in his career. Why is it important to have a Hall of Fame? It's important because as we get further away from our accomplishments, sometimes we wonder if and how the things that we have done resonate with others. And I'm here to tell you, as I walk the hallways of the University of Illinois, I understood that there were legends and giants and heroes that had walked these hallways and had gone into these locker rooms before me. And that, that honor and that distinction was never lost on me. So as one Hall of Famer, I'm gonna say it again, as one Hall of Famer, now I'm showing off, now I'm showing off. But it feels so good to say that. I want to welcome Selena, Coach Williams, and Tanya to this Hall of Fame class. And I'm going to say it again, and it's going to sound like a broken record. It's about time we had a Hall of Fame. So thank you, Josh, for having this. Enough of me talking. Let's get to meet these giants of Illini track and field. Thank you. Tanya Williams, track and field. Tanya Williams was a two-time NCAA champion in the 400-meter hurdles in 1995 and 96, setting an NCAA championship meet record in 96. A 14-time All-American, she also finished second in the 100-meter hurdles in 1996 and third in that event in 1995. Williams won an impressive 20 Big Ten championships, 10 each in individual events and relays, second most in Illini history. She is a two-time Illinois Female Athlete of the Year and was the 1996 Big Ten Track and Field Athlete of the Year. Selena Mondi Milner, Track and Field. Selena Mondi Milner was an 18-time Track and Field All-American while winning an incredible 17 Big Ten individual and relay titles. She was a member of the Illinois 4x400-meter relay team that set American and NCAA records and was on Illini teams which won the Big Ten Outdoor Championships in 1988 and 89 and the Big Ten Indoor title in 1988. In international competition, Mondi Milner won gold at the 1995 World Championships for running a leg on the U.S. 4x100 meter relay team. 
Willie Williams, track and field. Willie Williams enjoyed incredible success during his collegiate track career, winning nine individual Big Ten sprint titles. But his greatest notoriety came in 1956 at the National Military Track Meet in Berlin, Germany. He made history by becoming the world's fastest human after breaking his hero Jesse Owens' world record in the 100-meter dash at 10.1 seconds. In the same stadium and same lane, Owens had run as a gold medal winner at the 1936 Olympics. Williams won the NCAA sprint titles in the 100-yard dash in 1953 and 54, while earning three All-America honors. What a treat to be able to have Coach Williams sitting up here with us. Before Tanya, Selena, and I chat a little bit, I'd like to welcome to the stage now from Illini sprinter Tim Simon, Big Ten Medal of Honor winner in 1988, who was coached by Coach Williams to have a little bit to say about it. Tim? Well, thank you all. I'm, I'm very honored, very honored to be here. Um, and as usual, I wrote down a, a number of things to say, and then when I got up, I couldn't find the paper. <laughs> but I want to speak on behalf of, 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 of my, my coach. I came to the University of Illinois in 1984. I was about 17 years old when I came here, um, and I was recruited by Coach Williams to come, and he's very honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and I'm speaking on his behalf, and I'm kind of looking at the, out of the side of my eye because I want to make sure he still has a lot of feistiness in him, and he, he, he may well come and join me, but at, at, at this point, he just wanted to let everyone know that he is very honored to be a part of this class, and as I think about his accomplishments, he had accomplishments at the University of Illinois as a student athlete, and then 20 some odd years, odd years later, 30 some odd years later, comes back and has great accomplishments as a track coach as well. You saw some of the accomplishments that he had as a student athlete. Um, some things that I would like to highlight for him is the fact that when he was here, freshmen couldn't even compete at the University of Illinois or any, any college at the, at the time. So, a lot of his accolades probably would be even greater had he been able to compete as a freshman. Um, but his teams, he was part of teams that won consecutive Big Ten championships for at least all of the years that he was there, basically. And he was a big part of that. He also won NCAA championship twice, at least, when he was there. Then he comes on later to coach some of the greatest athletes basically in, in the world at the time. Um, some of the things that he's most proud of is some of the things that the athletes have done even after their gradua uh, graduation. He has airline pilots, he has lawyers, he has doctors. Um, I'm a colon and rectal surgeon in Atlanta now. And when I came to the Univers University of Illinois, had no idea that I was going to be coached by someone who would have such an impact on us as students, as athletes. Some of the biggest memories I have of, of, of coach, somebody asked me earlier, they're not really good memories because they're usually <laughs> something when I did something bad, you know. <laughs> you know, he had to handle a lot of issues that happened because of, of me. I can recall um, as a freshman, um, I qualified for the NCAAs. I got third place indoors. That was a big deal at the time because before Coach Williams came, not many of the sprint, sprinters even made the NCAAs. So he was instrumental in that. So we go right off to spring break, right after the NCAAs. We run in, in a, a meet down in Baylor. And I break the school record. We have a good time. We're supposed to go off to the, really, the big meet was gonna be the Texas Relays. And so we had a few days in between the Baylor meet and the Texas Relays, and we stayed down at Baylor kind of coaching and tra tra getting coached and training. And um, we had a, the, the, the bright idea to go out and play some basketball. <laughs> and um, 
of course, I went out and played, played basketball. And I, you know, I was young at the time, and I was, you know, I was 18 years old, and I sprained my ankle. But I didn't tell him that at the time. <laughs> I didn't tell anyone. No, we, we, we were, and you, you talk about track community. We were all a, a great community and, um, and a great camaraderie. And we told him that basically I was walking and I tripped over a curb and hurt my ankle. So that was just kind of one of the things that Coach Williams had to deal with as he helped me to mature to, mature to be the person that I became as an athlete. And, um, you know, Coach Williams also had great ambition. When he was a, a coach, he also was very instrumental in making different devices that he would try on us. And um, one of the devices that actually had came to some success even before you, you know, people probably knew about it, he was probably one of the first people that made a device that basically you use as a pulley and you'd strap around your waist and you pull it behind you. And that was kind of the first time that that concept had even been done. And he was instrumental in being one of the first people to patent that. And it's still being used today by different football teams. He got all the football players to use it, all the football players to try it as well. Coach Williams also had great ambition. He just couldn't just be, and I know it says in the program that he was an assistant coach, but he, he just continued to be so successful that by the time he left, he became the associate head coach at, of the University of Illinois track team. So I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but Coach Williams is honored to be here. I was very honored when I was asked to speak on his behalf. And let's give Coach Williams a round of applause for all of his accomplishments. Nice round of applause for Tim as well. Tim, thank you very much. Now, Tanya, both you and Selena, you were on campus when, when Coach Williams was there. What, what do you remember about? What I remember the most about Coach Williams was he took the time to appreciate all athletes. And I have to tell you, coming from a very small town in Milledgeville, Georgia, I wasn't too accustomed to having lots of people around during the uh, track and field, the training. Uh, usually you're alone <laughs> for many hours of <laughs> training. Uh, but Coach Williams always was motivational and inspirational. And I just remember the first time that I met him, uh, he didn't have a lot to say, but a lot of the athletes had a lot to say about Coach, Coach Willie is what they referred to him as. And they would say, you know, Willie is great, right? Willie is an Olympian. Willie is a superstar. And I said, who is Willie? I'm from Georgia, so I had never had the pleasure and the honor of meeting someone of such great stature. But most of all, I remember Coach Willie Williams being a great person. And I'd like for everyone to know that how appreciative I was as a scholar athlete being supported by Coach Williams, who's been inspirational to so many of us. Uh, you won a, a couple of national championships. I want you to, to take, me, take me to that moment just as the race is about to start and you know you have a chance to win a championship like that. What is that like? That was for me. It was what? Me? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear you say time. Sorry. Yeah. A little excited. I'm a little nervous. Um, <laughs> Don't be right nervous. Before, We're all friends here and so are they. Absolutely. Right before it, well, I'm always really loose right before my race, so I don't get really nervous. If I get nervous, then it's a problem because something big is going to happen. But, um, well, when I knew I was supposed to win, it was I was at the beginning of the race planning on what I was going to do post-race, after my, my race dance, what I was going to do, how I was going to throw up my hands, how I was going to do a dance, what I was going to do when I run across the line. None of that happened because when I went across the line, all I could do was like this, and then it went down. But... It's exhilarating, it's exciting, you know. So show us one of the things you'd planned that you didn't do. <laughs> I couldn't do it, all I could do is throw my hands <laughs> up. I was so tired. <laughs> but I was planning it out in my head. Now, Selena, you won, I think, 17 Big Ten titles, 18. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
Eight, 18 times what? 18 times All-American. If you that's say a, so, yes. That's a, lot, that's a <laughs> lot of winning, right? Yes. But what I want to hear about is your first ever race when you were a kid. Your first race. What happened? My first race, first of all, uh, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge my family who is here, my mom, my brothers, my husband, and my son, and my dad, of course, is with us in spirit. Thank you for being here, for supporting me throughout all of these years. Um, I recall very vividly wearing a very hot felt sweatsuit, and for those of you who know anything about track and field, Converse shoes are not necessarily ideal for sprinting. But nonetheless, I had my favorite Converse high tops on with a hot felt sweatsuit in the middle of the summer in Georgia. Whoa. Now you all know it's hot yeah. in Georgia, right? So with that, the gun goes off and immediately I'm anxious, I take off and I fall flat on my face. So that is a vivid memory I have of my first race. But the other thing I remember is looking into the stands and seeing my brother who was cheering, James, and he was probably just as shocked as I was because I somehow got up, won that race, and that was 100 yards at that time. So the spirit you. of an Illini Hall of Famer in the early making, right? And I, I would say to you, I have been... Uh, inspired to never give up and the University of Illinois has provided that platform for me uh, among great athletes such as Tanya and Willie, Willie and others uh, to never give up and always have the Illinois spirit of pride to get back up and run and try your best and do your best. Yes. As I was reading and learning about all of your careers the name of Coach Gary Winkler kept coming up yeah. for both of you. What influence did he have on you, Tanya? Well, that's my stick man. That's what I called him all through my track career. I don't know if many of you know Gary kind of looks like Woody from Toy Story. He's like the cowboy. He's tall, slim figure guy, cowboy hat, cowboy belt. And in my mind, I was like, he don't quite look like a track coach. But he was awesome. He's very smart, strategic. Very detailed. I mean, he, he's, our workouts were down to our meals. You had to tell him how much rest you had, what you ate for the day. You know, it was awesome. For me, it was awesome because my track career, unlike I started in the 11th grade with no practice, just running, you know, in competition. So running with Gary was like my organized track and field life. I, I never knew about steps and, you know, how to run a race. I would run and I'll take my earrings off or I'll run and I get my jewelry caught up and stuff and he used to get so furious, but he was a genius. He's very, very, very smart. And Selena, you wouldn't have gone to Illinois and almost didn't had he not gone to Illinois, right? That is absolutely correct. Uh, being from Georgia, let's just say I was headed south uh, to compete in athletics. I didn't even know of an indoor track and field season. So I remember the first time I met uh, Coach Winkler, I'd read about him, and I just had made up my mind I was going to school somewhere else. But I remember meeting him in Iowa and seeing him, and uh, I have a different memory of uh, what he looked like or reminded me of, uh, so I'm probably going to date myself a little bit here. Uh, Tanya says, Woody, I would say to you, uh, I turned to my mom and I said, I met the coach, well, he told me he was at Illinois, and he he looks like Richard Petty. <laughs> For those of you who know the, the, the race car driver. Richard Petty was fast too. Very fast as well. Um, but I remember having a very um, special conversation with Coach Winkler. And I have to tell you, I was most impressed by him. He had done his homework. He was very conscientious of all student athletes. And he was just someone who was a role model. One of the smartest individuals I've had the opportunity to work with. Uh, the running joke that Coach Winkler sometimes would share with individuals, and I'll share it with you, is that I am part of the reason as to why he lost his hair. Uh, I stressed him out a little bit. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I will tell you the, the moment that we met, 
Uh, it was a connection in that he was an avid fan of the sport. He was uh, someone who studied the sport and a mathematician and created so many things strategically. And again, just inspired me on the track and off the track to do the best that I could to be inspirational to others as he had been for me. All of you have been great inspirations to the Illinois track program and gone on to very successful lives afterwards. Congratulations. Let's hear it for this group of Hall of Famers, the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. Tanya Williams, Selena Monty Milner, and Willie Williams. A lot of speed up here, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Your pocket square is almost as nice as mine, the one that Sid gave me here, you know. Congratulations, coach, you. you all set? Nice round of applause. Tim Simon as well. We're here tonight to honor all of the Hall of Famers in attendance for sure, but we also want to make sure that we celebrate, celebrate the members of the 2018 Hall of Fame class that are no longer with us. Certainly their accomplishments are very noteworthy. And you'll have a chance to hear from so many Hall of Famers tonight, but those who can't be with us, we want you to recognize what they accomplished during their time at Illinois as well with these career highlights. Alex Agassi. Agassi was a three-time All-American lineman, twice for Illinois in 1942 and 1946, and once at Purdue during training for duty in the Marines during World War II. After a decorated two-year stint in the Marines, Agassi returned to Illinois for the 1946 season, earned the Big Ten Silver Football Award, and led the Fighting Illini to the Conference Championship and Rose Bowl victory over UCLA. Charles Carney. One of the greatest dual sport athletes in Fighting Illini history, Charles Carney was the only Fighting Illini athlete and first in the Big Ten to earn consensus All-America honors in both football and basketball. Ray Elliott. Nicknamed Mr. Illini, Elliott was one of the most popular and inspirational personalities in Fighting Illini history. He served as head football coach from 1942 to 1959 leading Illinois to Big Ten championships in 1946, 51, and 53. His 1951 squad were bestowed national champion honors with an undefeated 9-0-1 record, including a 40-7 victory over Stanford in the 1952 Rose Bowl. Maxwell Garrett. Garrett earned a spot in the U.S. Fencing Hall of Fame after building an incredible record as one of the nation's top fencing coaches and as one of the leading internationally ranked fencing officials. During his 28 years as head fencing coach at Illinois, the Illini won 17 Big Ten championships, two NCAA championships, and only once ranked lower than second place in the Big Ten. Johnny Red Kerr. Kerr earned Big Ten Silver Basketball honors in 1954 and first team all Big Ten recognition that season after averaging more than 25 points per game, which remains the second best scoring average in school history. A member of the Illinois All-Century team, he finished his Illini career as the school's all-time scoring leader with 1,299 points and was named to the 1952 NCAA Final Four All-Tournament team. Charles Pond. Pond won an incredible 11 consecutive Big Ten gymnastics championships and four NCAA team titles from 1950 to 1960 during a 25-year run as head coach of the Fighting Illini. Joe Sapora. He was Illinois' first two-time NCAA wrestling champion, Big Ten champion, and All-American during the 1929 and 30 season. He later captured two Amateur Athletic Union titles for the New York Athletic Club and went on to coach wrestling at City College in New York from 1932 to 1968. Sapporo was inducted into the Helms Foundation Hall of Fame in 1994.
like to take a moment to welcome all of the family members of the people you just saw who are members of this class. Please welcome Matt Agassi, the grandson of Alex Agassi. Matt, welcome. Ray Elliott's grandson, Doug Cartland, is with us. Doug. The daughter of Maxwell Garrett, Esther Solar. Esther, welcome. And the nephews of Joe Sapora, John and Joe Sapora are here. Welcome, gentlemen. And several members of Johnny Red Kerr's family here, but please recognize his daughter, Essie Agen Kerr, and son, Matt Kerr. Welcome to the Kerr family. We appreciate you being with us to help honor your family in this 2018 Hall of Fame class. And once again, our apologies for the technical difficulties on that last package. Now, let's meet our fourth group of inductees here tonight, three standouts from the 1980s and 90s representing baseball, football, and volleyball. Baseball. Baseball catcher Darren Fletcher earned first-team All-America honors in 1987 after setting an Illinois hitting record with a 497 batting average that still stands today. He was the Illinois team MVP in 1986 and 87, while being named the Big Ten Player of the Year in 1987. Fletcher was drafted in the sixth round of the Major League Baseball draft by the Los Angeles Dodgers and enjoyed a 14-year big league career with the Dodgers, Phillies, Expos, and Blue Jays. He made an all-star game appearance in 1994 as a member of the Expos, and his best batting season came in 2000 when he hit 320 with 20 homers for the Blue Jays. Dana Howard, football. Linebacker Dana Howard finished his Fighting Illini career as the Big Ten's all-time leader in tackles with 595 stops from 1991 to 94. He earned first-team All-America honors in 1993 and 94 and the Butkus Award in 1994, becoming the first Illini football player to win a major national award. Howard was named first-team All-Big Ten three times and was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in both 1993 and 94. He will be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in December. Nancy Brookhart Sharon, Volleyball. Nancy Brookhart Sharon was second team All-American three times from 1987 to 1989, helping lead the Fighting Illini to consecutive NCAA Final Four appearances in 1987 and 88. Teaming with fellow Illini Hall of Famer Mary Eggers, Illinois won Big Ten titles in 1986, 87, and 88 with a combined conference record of 53 wins and one loss over the three seasons. In 1987, Nancy shared Big Ten Most Valuable Player honors with Eggers while earning first-team All-Big Ten recognition three straight seasons. Please welcome Darren Fletcher, Dana Howard, and Nancy Brookhart Charon. Nancy, welcome. Congratulations. You can, why don't you sit beside me? That's the one, that's the chair nobody wants. Have that one, congratulations. You know what? I'm on the College Football Hall of Fame Honors Court. We've got a lot of Illini defenders who are in the mix for the Hall of Fame for sure, and Dana's more than welcome. Hey. Darren, how are you? I'm glad you didn't get tased by Tara earlier, last year when she was supposed to be detailing guarding you. Congratulations to all of you. This is, uh, your accomplishments have been remarkable. Nancy, I want to start with you. When you played volleyball at Illinois, that became quite the home court advantage. You guys had a ritual when you came out for a volleyball match. What happened if someone was a little too close to the locker room door when you guys were ready to storm out? Um, well, we did have one casualty. Uh, we would bust out of the locker room door at full speed, and unfortunately there was a lady standing outside that door, and. You know, she was laying down, and we all just jumped over and kept running. 
You know, because we had there, a great there was a match to play, right? I'm hoping she was okay, but um, you didn't go back to check, or nobody checked. I'm sure somebody did. <laughs> we had a game to get ready for, but so what led to that type of enthusiasm coming out of the locker room? Typically, you'd expect that from football or something. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but um, we were extremely competitive. I mean, we competed playing Pictionary. We competed to be the first people on the court who could eat, you know, the pregame meal the fastest. So, but were there pep talks or something involved that got you into the moment right there? Uh, you know, Mike Hebert would always get us pretty fired up. He always had words of wisdom, and he would make us laugh, and, um, you know, he always brought out the best in us. So that fired us up. Yeah. That ferocity was something that, that you played with, certainly in football. What was, your, what was your time at Illinois like with all of the great defenders you, you had coming through the pot? Well, you know, it was really cool. Uh, well, first of all, one of the, my guys, John Holosek, he's in the audience. So without a guy like that, there would be no me. So let me say that. And, and obviously my wife, because without her, I've been hanging out with her since the ninth grade. So, you know. That really she, no then she ought to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, too. she really should. She really <laughs> should. And, and my kids as well. But yeah, uh, I mean, I, I just enjoyed going out and, and hitting people. That, that was my goal. I just wanted to put pain on you. So I didn't care how I did it, how I got you down. I just wanted to give, make you have pain. You seem to inflict particular pain on like the Ohio States and the Michigans. The tackle totals are crazy in those games. Was there anything different, or was it just by virtue of the way the game was played? I think because they were like the titans of the Big Ten, so I wanted to make sure that every time I went out, they knew my name. Yeah, and I think they probably did. Well, I asked them after I tackled them, so you know my name? <laughs> you know my <laughs> What's the, what, If you had to boil it down and say, I remember one tackle, one hit that felt so clean, so hard, best hit you ever laid on anybody. What was it? I would say um, at Michigan when we uh, came back and beat them at Michigan. And um, I can remember, um, I think it was Tyrone Wheatley. We were, we were down by like three, and he, and he started doing this. And I said, if I can hit that dude one good time. <laughs> and I, and I, I, I caught him, and he fumbled. And we recovered it, went in and scored and beat him at Michigan. So that was. <laughs> there, you, you pretty much beat everybody. 1987, I, mean, I don't know that I've ever seen it. You hit nearly 500 for the season. Yes. What? Uh, aluminum bats. Yeah. <laughs> Big fan of aluminum bats. <laughs> Professional baseball, you got to use the wood bat, but. Back then in the 80s, aluminum bat, and, um, you know, I was, I was 80 for 161, you know, I was 497. I didn't leg out a lot of hits, so I had to hit it hard, you know. I wasn't uh, bunting and, and trying to get to first base, so I just pieced together a, a, a lot of knocks at that time and, um, you know, had a good year, had a very good year. What about the, what about the last game that year? Did you know? How close you were to 500, or did you find out afterwards you were like 80 of 161 instead of? Um, I think I had it dialed up in my memory each at bat, so I was pretty. I don't know. I mean, I you know, it, 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 I do remember that I had a very good game against Purdue, my last game of my collegiate career, and to get to what Tara was saying about my incident in the ball game in, um, at the University of Illinois, the basketball game, it was against Purdue, and I thought that there had been a hit out on me, possibly, <laughs> because of all the knocks I got against Purdue in 87, and we were playing Purdue, and I looked at Tara, and I was like, you know what, I know that there's a possibility that some people may not be happy with me here, but uh, no, she looked so professional. Yeah. She had the taser, she had the microphone deal here, you know, I was like, you know, actually I said, are you Tara Hurlis? Can I have your autograph? Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, no, I'm, I'm like your, your uh, bodyguard. I was like, no, I really think you're Tara Hurlis. <laughs> how, how, did your, how did your time at Illinois prepare you for your major league career? Well, it's an opportunity. You know, I wasn't heavily recruited. Small town kid, grew up 20 miles from uh, University of Illinois. 
didn't get a lot of scholarship offers. Illinois knew of me because of my father played at Illinois. Um, they weren't sure, went to a small school. Well, he doesn't play nobody. You know, I don't know whether he can do it at a bigger level, but they gave me the opportunity, Reese, and I really appreciate that because I wasn't quite sure whether I believed in myself at that time, but Illinois believed in me and they, they gave me that shot. And um, without that opportunity, I don't think I would have really ever believed in myself as a player. And I flourished as a, as a hitter at the Illinois and then really just kind of used that and went on and was able to become a, a big league player. And I, I really owe Illinois um, a lot for the opportunity that they gave me. I heard Josh earlier talk about the significance of the Illinois family. Dana, what's that meant to you? What does Illinois family mean to you? Well, it means a lot because um, family is everything to me. So um, in East St. Louis, I mean, that's how we, what we call 89 blocks anyway. So everybody in East St. Louis, we're all family, from the Jackie Jordan Curseys to the Kellen Winslows, the Brian Coxes, myself. You know, everybody, you know, we root for each other. So the way we do it in East St. Louis is the same way we do it at Illinois. So I, I, it was a great experience for me just coming back to another family. Nancy, what do you think? How, how has that impacted you from your time since you left Illinois? Uh, since I left? Um, I mean, I have some of the greatest friendships. My uh, teammates were actually texting me advice on what to say and what not to say <laughs> before coming up on stage. Um, you know, and that, those friendships are timeless. And it really is, it's beyond friendship, but it is family. Um, my mom is here tonight and she's representing you know, my dad. I mean, they were my two greatest fans. And um, they were pretty picky about where I went to school and there were certain recruiting letters that they wouldn't even let me open. Such as? No names. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, Enough time's passed now. But. Uh, maybe some of the other Illinois schools. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> one, one in this city uh, that wears purple. <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> schools were known for um, maybe the party schools, and but Illinois was definitely one that they uh, that they celebrated. And um, you know, they wore orange and blue, came to every game, and uh, they were embraced by the community, which is really important. And then coming back to different alumni events, we had a Final Four reunion a couple years ago, and some of the networkers that group came up, and you know, I had one gentleman came up come up to me, and he said you know, that I was his wife's favorite player and she had passed about three months before the event and, you know, he had tears in his eyes and it's gonna make me emotional, but, you know, at the time you don't realize what an impact you might have on somebody's life and, um, you know, you're just having fun and enjoying it, so it was pretty memorable. It's really awesome, that's really cool. Dana, do you, for you and Darren both, that's one of the things that I mentioned at the top of our time together tonight that connects intercollegiate athletics, it's sometimes not just your teammates. You don't even know the impact that you have on people, the, the memories that you create for them. As, as you look back on your career and you realize some of that significance, how, how does that affect you? I mean, it's really cool because, I mean, you have people come up to you anywhere in the country and, man, you were Dana Howard. Like, yeah, you know, thinking it's bad, but it's actually good. They're like, man, you, I, I watched you. You know, I, I was young, I played. You know, I wanted to be you. I was like, man, for real? You know, so, so, but it makes you feel really good because you've done something that you've set out to do all your life. At least for me, I mean, I, I've been wanting to be a professional football player since I was in the fourth grade. So that's when I started signing my signature in the fourth grade. <laughs> I mean, it's a true, true story. Fourth grade, I said, I'm, this, this signature right here is what I've been signing since the fourth grade. So when I, when I hear people tell me that, <clears throat> it just makes you feel good about yourself that you've reached people that you didn't know you were reaching. And Darren, this whole thing at Illinois, it's, you've been able to reach people on the outside, but this has become not only an Illinois family, but your personal family has been deeply invested in, in fighting Illini baseball now with three generations playing for the Illini, right? Yeah, three generations. Um, my father was a all Big Ten pitcher back in 1962. I was uh, an all Big Ten catcher in 87 and, you know, Really, for me, one of the the greatest moments for me, uh, my myself and my wife, was the amount of fun we had watching my son play at the University of Illinois, um, Casey. And thank you. You know, you. I had a. 
I had a fine career, but for me, it was it was it was it was ten times as as good watching him play. They had a fantastic season in, in 2015. They made it to the super sectionals, and he was an All Big Ten outfielder. And the excitement that I saw at a baseball game at the University of Illinois when they played Vanderbilt, and the amount of people that came out to watch a collegiate baseball game was just fantastic. And the people that supported Dan Hartlib and his his program was just phenomenal that year. I want to congratulate all three of you, very deserving Hall of Famers. Great talking with you tonight. Thank you for being here. Congratulations to all of you, Nancy, Dana, and Darren. Congratulations. Nice round of applause for those great Illini legends. As they make their way back to their seats, I'd like to welcome to the stage the head coach of your fighting Illini men's basketball team, Brett Underwood. Brett. Thank you. It's an honor to be up here. Kendall Gill. Darren Williams, ultimate winners. Let's think about this for a minute. Illinois won 80% of its games with these two guys on the court. That's an average of 27 wins per year. In the seven combined seasons, we'll go Kendall's four years, their teams were 98 and 31. That's pretty impressive. In Darren's three years, 88 and 16. Along with that, in each of those seven seasons, their teams participated in the NCAA tournament every year. That's pretty doggone good. That's pretty impressive. That needs a round of applause. <laughs> Along with that, they helped their teams to number one rankings. Not only that, Kendall in 1989, Darren in 2005, final four appearances. Something very special. Let's add one more piece to this. The two winningest seasons in school history with these two guys on the court. The 1989 team winning 31 games, only to be topped by Darren and his group in 2005 with 37 wins. Absolutely. The lowest seed these teams ever had in the NCAA tournament was a five seed. The fewest wins in a season, 23. Well, that's pretty doggone impressive right there. These guys, tremendous workers, developed their skills. Neither one McDonald's All-Americans. But they took this passion that they had here at the University of Illinois, and they made themselves world-class athletes. Darren or excuse me, Kendall, first became the number five draft pick of the Charlotte Hornets. Darren, the number three pick of the Utah Jazz. Two highest draft picks of any fighting Illini basketball players. Because of their passion, because of their dedication, Kendall was able to spend 15 incredible seasons in the NBA. Darren had an outstanding 12 season pro career. With that, Please, let's go to the video. Let's look at these outstanding Williams, Fighting Illini basketball. winners. Darren Williams was a two-time first-team All-Big Ten selection and a consensus All-American in 2005 after he helped lead the Fighting Illini to the NCAA national title game. And Illini fans will always remember his three-pointer that tied the Arizona game after the incredible comeback in the 2005 regional final. He was selected third overall in the 2005 NBA draft and was a three-time All-Star during his 12-year NBA career. On the Olympic stage, Williams helped Team USA win two Olympic gold medals in 2008 and 2012. Kendall Gill, basketball. Kendall Gill will forever be remembered as an explosive member of the Flying Illini squad that advanced to the 1989 NCAA Final Four. As a senior in 1990, he earned consensus All-America honors and was named first-team All-Big Ten after leading the conference in scoring at 20 points per game. 
After his stellar senior season, Gill was the fifth overall pick of the 1990 NBA draft by the Charlotte Hornets and scored nearly 13,000 points in his 15-year NBA career. And let's welcome these two tremendous players and great ambassadors for Illinois basketball and now Hall of Famers at the University of Illinois, Darren Williams and Kendall Gill. Have a seat right here, guys, and let's, uh, we're going to talk about Arizona, and we're going to talk about Syracuse, but the first thing we're going to do, both went to the Final Four, head-to-head, -head, 89 versus 05. I knew that was coming. Who wins? <laughs> what, you ever seen The Godfather, where the part where Marlon Brando says, never tell anybody outside the family what you're thinking. <laughs> both great teams, uh, you know, Darren and, and D and, and, and their crew did uh, the, the Illinois legacy proud uh, by getting into the national championship game. My team, the Flying Illini, we did uh, a great job as well. And I think the most important thing is to always have an Illini in the NBA to continue the legacy. And that's how I look at uh, this rivalry of the 2005-89 team. I don't even discuss it anymore. Same thing. I mean, <laughs> we've been getting this. I've been getting this question since I left here, you know. And uh, it's, there's no, there's no way to compare the teams. You know, we're two different eras. You know, uh, there was so much time between each team. The only way to do it was to, was to get everybody, you know, on the floor at the same time. And you know, by that time, these guys were, well. Yeah, I'm besides old. him, besides yeah, him, yeah, besides like him, him they, right. <laughs> <laughs> they might have been hobbled a little bit. <laughs> What, what does this mean? You guys achieved at the highest level when you played. You played the NBA and had terrific NBA careers. And now to be recognized by your alma maters like this, Darren, what's this mean to you? It means a lot. I mean, you see all the athletes that, that have, have been, you know, showcased tonight, all of them last year, and then there's going to be many more. The uh, University of Illinois has had a lot of history in, in their athletics. Um, and so for me to be, you know, honored, uh, and to be part of this Hall of Fame uh, means a lot. You know, it means a lot, you know, not only being part of this, this fraternity for a lifetime, um, but just to be honored and, and recognized amongst all these people here, um, it, it means a lot. What's the significance to you, Kendall? Uh, it, it means everything. Um, you know, when I first uh, came to the University of Illinois, uh, you, you, you heard Coach Underwood say that we didn't have, uh, well, Darren and I weren't uh, All-Americans. He, he's right, you know, McDonald's All-Americans. I was a 7-Eleven All-American. <laughs> so, and, and, and that's the way that I looked at it when I, the first day that I walked on uh, to campus. I knew that I had to work all those days of running on Memorial, on, in, in Memorial Stadium on that football field, uh, walking from, from campus to Assembly Hall, back then Assembly Hall in the, in the cold, in four or five inches of snow, practicing with, with all of my teammates, Kenny Battle, uh, Nick Anderson, Marcus Liberty, Steve Bardo, and all those guys. And I have to say a big thank you to those guys because without them, I, I wouldn't be here. There would be no flying Illini. Uh, all, of those, all of those days of work, all those years of work, the culmination of that has resulted into this, and, and that's what makes it, it all worth it to me. I mentioned this to Coach Henson when he was up here. You went to visit him recently. Yeah, I did. What, what was that like? What did you guys do? It, it was great. Coach forgot that, that he pulled out the Syracuse I game. Thought, I thought so. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he, he did pull out the Syracuse game, and, and he, he was actually narrating what he was thinking at the time of the game. And it was interesting because my perspective is just on the court playing. But still at this age, he's still teaching me about the game. And, and I picked up a couple of things from him for, from a couple of weeks ago. What, what was one thing that he saw from your game or something that he, was he pointing out, you should have done this? Uh, why didn't we check him? Why didn't we switch it? Whatever it might have been. Yeah, he, he, he actually, I don't know if you guys remember, but Kenny Battle and Lowell Hamilton were injured in that game. Kenny Battle had, had, had fallen in the game previous to that when we played Louisville and, and sprained his knee. Lowell sprained his ankle. 
And coach was telling me about an adjustment that he made with those two to actually help us win the Syracuse game. And, and that involved Irving Small being substituted for Lowell Hamilton and Kenny Battle at a certain time. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool even after all these years he let you in on that. You had the great comeback, the great shot against Arizona. When you guys were down at 14 points, a few minutes left in the game, and you had this sensational season that was now hanging by a thread, what was, what was that like? I mean, honestly, that time went by so fast. I have no clue what happened. Like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember what our mindset was, what our feelings were. I know. I just know we didn't give up. You know, that was the main thing, and that was the thing about our team is that we just, we believed in each other, we believed in ourselves, um, and it wasn't our time to lose, you know, and so I don't know what triggered it, what happened. I think Luther got a steal. Uh, I still haven't, honestly, I haven't watched the game. Uh, you've the, never, you've never, never watched, watched, the, I've never watched highlights the game. or anything? I've Not, watched the highlights. I've seen the highlights, highlights okay. yeah. But I've never watched the game entirely, yeah. which I, I probably need to do at some point. Um, but it just went by so fast. You know, it, it was, it, it seemed like, we weren't, we weren't going to be able to do it. And then all of a sudden, you know, we, we hit a couple threes. We got back in it, a couple steals, layups, a couple stops, and, and we, we had a ball game. And so, you know, it, it just was so fast. Well, you've been, you've been pretty busy since then. You've been playing a lot since then. <laughs> but is there, is there any reason that you haven't watched it? Have there, been, have there been other games that you've gone back and watched as opposed to that one? No, I'm just not a guy that really dwells on the past, I guess. You yeah. Know, um, I'm just always looking to the next thing. So I think that's, that's probably the main reason. Um, I mean, all, all, these, all these Illini fans, they remind me enough, so I don't have to really watch it. <laughs> I feel like I, I could talk to, to anybody in this room and they can walk me through it uh, play by play better than I, I would ever know. <laughs> but, but if there is a moment, I would say, and, and to dwell on the past, it would be an occasion like this. When you found out this was going to happen for you, what was your reaction? Uh, I was I was honored, you know. Um, like I said, I was honored just to to, to be included in this in this, in this class. Um, you know, I wasn't able to make it last year, uh, which was unfortunate, and wish I would have came back. But but um, things didn't work out, and uh, Josh Whitman came and, and visited with me in Dallas, and personally invited me out here to, to this one. And uh, you know, after getting to know him for the last year, I, I definitely couldn't refuse his his offer and, and definitely glad I came back and, uh, you know, was a part of this because this is really a special night. It was a special night and I'm sure everyone knows here you were playing in the NBA Finals last year. Certainly a, a good reason for not being there. Kendall, when you think about this night and the significance that it will mean for you tomorrow when you wake up and realize that your alma mater has honored you in this way, what will be, be the most meaningful thing to you about it? The most meaningful thing is, is for me is that I, I came into the University of Illinois, and I don't know if you guys remember, well, all the athletes do remember where the varsity room is, and that's where all the athletes used to eat uh, during the season, their, their, their uh, dinner. We had our pre, uh, our, 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 I guess, our immediate day there my freshman year. Not one person interviewed me, even my hometown newspaper, Okay. And I made a promise to myself in that room that by the time I left this school, I was going to be one of the best players to ever come through the University of Illinois. I had no idea that it was going to come true. But I put my head down. I stayed to the grindstone. And fortunately enough, with, with the help of many people, I was, I was able to make it. And, and this day is telling me that I did the right thing. There's no question about that. Both these guys, great ambassadors for Illinois, both burgeoning media stars. Kendall working. Darren's got a great podcast I encourage you to check out. Kendall, Darren, congratulations. Darren, a year belated. Glad that you were with us tonight. Kendall, congratulations on being Hall Thank of you. Famers. Two of the greats in fighting Illini history, Darren Williams and Kendall Gill. Congratulations, Mike. Kendall, congratulations. Well done. Tremendous accomplishments, not only from those two stars, but from everybody that we've talked to tonight. Before I hand it back over to, to Josh to say goodnight to everyone, I want to thank you for including me this evening. Uh, this has been 
a great deal of fun. I appreciate the passion and love you have for the University of Illinois, and I thank you for your hospitality and welcoming me. I hope you have a great evening, and I'll turn it over to Josh now to say good night. I'd like to ask all of our Hall of Famers to return up here to the stage. We're going to close the evening with everyone up here together. Please bring all the Hall of Famers back up. While they're making their way up, how about a big round of applause for Reese Davis and joining us this night, doing such a fantastic job. <laughs> to reiterate the point that I made during my remarks, just can't thank all of you enough for being here, being a part of this special evening. We look forward to continuing this tradition in Chicago next year with the third Hall of Fame class in the history of the University of Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. Now, we will close, as we always do, with the singing of our alma mater. I had to be sure and get him up on stage before I told him that's what we were going to do. All right. Here we go. Everybody up. You know the words. Thank you, everybody, and good night.